Yummy. Yummy. <laughs> So that was Gothenburg. I know, I know. I didn't really film that much. I was too busy with soccer and seeing friends from Hong Kong and all that. We actually really didn't get out much in Gothenburg. We did, though, have some Swedish meatballs and had a few other local dishes. Um, after we finished, we decided we we're going to head up to Norway. We went up the west coast of Sweden. We stopped in a town called Marstrand, which has a very famous castle built around the 1600s, a castle Karlsten. Now, Marstrand is one of the few ports in that area that doesn't ice over. It uh, was kept all the ice wouldn't freeze over. And as such, it was a major port for the Swedish Navy in the 16, 17, 1800s. Uh, the castle eventually fell out of disuse, but it was still a, DO, a, a Ministry of Defense facility until 20 years ago. Now it's just a tourist attraction. The city is a big sailing city. We went there, just sort of took in the sights. coast of Sweden we go into southern Norway and in southern Norway we come across an area known as uh, Oscarburg's fortress, Oscarborg fortress. Oscarborg fortress played a major role in World War II and in the defense of Norway. It is somewhat regarded like an Alamo type situation for Norwegians. It was a place where Norway forestalled an invasion at least for a day and gave their government a chance to survive. So I wanted to take the kids there. We uh, also had seen the movie The King's Speech, and that's a really, really good flick worth watching. So off to Oscarborg. Oh, my rice is ready. <laughs> Welcome to Oskarsborg Fortress in Norway, just outside of Oslo.
we are on a little trip with my kids to see the gun batteries here at this fortress. These gun batteries took out the German cruiser, the Blucher, which was leading a commando group of Gestapo, Russian special forces and military officers into Oslo to seize power. The guns that you see here blasted the ship in 1940, and the torpedo batteries on the other side of the island finished her off, delaying for about 24 hours the invasion of Norway and allowing the king and the government to flee into northern Norway, in, eventually into exile in the United Kingdom. This fortress is regarded as saving Norway. The men who fought here were conscripts. They'd only been in the service for about a week, and they fought very bravely against a massive German invasion force. Uh, so this place has a really special part, special part of uh, Norwegian history is here at this fortress. So let's go take a look. Hey, tell me when to fire. Now. Now? You just hit like the front part of it. It's not a good thing. No, you want to hit like right in the middle so it cracks in two. Oh. Parker, get ready to fire. Boom. No, no, no. Why not? Now. You want to take out the bridge? Now, yeah. Now, boom. Let's hit that thing. That's called the bridge. Yeah. Boom. We took out a freighter. So the torpedoes were over on that part of the island, just, just behind that little point, and they shot out and finished off the ship, which is now sunk about oh, a kilometer that, that way. Now, if you want to learn more about this, there's a great Norwegian film called The King's Choice, and it's about the king of Norway who had a choice. Does he accede to the Nazis' occupation demands, or does he flee? Does he stand up for what's right? The King's Choice starts out with the battle here at Oscarborg, and then it follows the king as he makes his way north, being protected by the Royal Household Guard and a bunch of uh, military cadets who fight delaying actions against the Germans to give the government and the king a chance to escape. Great movie, The King's Choice. I definitely recommend watching. Okay, get out.